Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to be discussing the hex price. Is there a bull flag breakout currently playing out right now based on this bull flag that we've been following for a minute now, tweeted about it. You guys have been showing some love on that. So remember, if you like this kind of quantitative and technical hybrid analysis on the hex price, as well as pulse chain fundamentals on both projects, and more, leave a thumbs up, be subscribed by the end of the video if you aren't already. And let's go ahead and talk about not only this bull flag, but also a fractal that we haven't discussed on this channel that I just found last night. Pretty interesting stuff. I'll share that with you near the end, but let's go ahead and discuss a few things. First of all, moving averages look great. We seem to have been holding support on the 20 day, 21, uh, day moving and exponential moving average respectively and you can see that with these two groups here so overall it looks pretty good right previous times we've had slight accumulation zones beneath it this one was shorter than the previous one and now it seems to be even shorter but more importantly is this breakout I want to discuss of this flag that we've been looking at and here it is on on Twitter right I retweeted or rather I quote tweeted this a tweet I made back in the day when we broke our falling parallel channel. We were also calling this a bull flag, and this is around the one and a half penny region or so. Right, this was a, a while back, almost a month ago, but in price it was like more than three x ago. It seems like a long time ago. And once we broke this, we actually hit our technical target, and then we went beyond it. And that's part of the the framework we're going to be discussing here in this video, right? So. I retweeted that saying, hey, remember what happened last time? Because this is where we currently are now, 3x higher, but our falling parallel channel, the flag of our bull flag has broken to the upside and we've actually had full bodies close above it on the daily, which again, makes it pretty, pretty significant in my opinion. This is a very, very clean bull flag, textbook bull flag. And let's actually talk about our targets, right? So let's just do this real quick, right? In previous previous times we've had bullish formations, textbook bullish formations, we've had technical targets. And I've discussed this in depth at length on this channel, but we're gonna go ahead and cover it a little more formally right now. And that is this ascending triangle back in September and October of 2020. It was textbook, right? Textbook ascending triangle, this common level of resistance with higher lows and the poll was about 110% move, putting our target at approximately over here, 0 0.007. However, as you can see with this measured price range, we did a 234% pump, which is a little over 2x this, this pump over here of 110%, right? 110 times two is 220, almost 234. You get what I'm saying? We doubled our expectation on this tear over here and then we've talked about this as well where we had our our bull flag and you can draw the beginning of this like back here but i chose to do it here because you know i considered this to be our kind of final little mini accumulation phase before our actual impulse move up so again to, to each their own discretion but i chose to plot it right here right and the move from this point that I chose to plot it to the local peak was about 160% or so, 158. And once we broke our our falling parallel channel, our technical target was approximately the three penny region, 3.3 pennies. And what did we do? We almost two x that because what's two times 158? Right? It's about 316 we did almost 314%. So you see what I'm saying? It's super close, almost a two X to the point where roughly speaking, we could say these were two X overperforming our expectations, two X overperforming our technical targets. And so where are we now, right? Cause right, we, we pretty much doubled this, right? So instead of reaching our 3.3 pennies, we reached, you know, 6.7 pennies. So two X our expectation. And so where are we now is over here. What would happen if the exact same thing played out that we've seen twice? And keep in mind, something happening twice isn't necessarily predictive, right? Just two, two formations, two data sets, so to speak. But nonetheless, we like to talk about what is possible 
based on what we have historically seen, even if it is few data points. Sometimes few data points become more over time. And so I'll keep you updated on how valid this sort of pattern continues to become over time. But for now, if we're to say, what if the exact same thing played out, where again, we've had our textbook, textbook bull flag, you have our pull pretty much straight line, our clean falling parallel channel where we had the bottom of the channel and the top of the channel tested plenty of times and we've broken it with full daily candles closing above it. And so our technical target based on where we broke out is approximately 10 cents. And we've discussed this at length that 10 cents seems reasonable. It's also psychological clean level, but keep in mind that one penny was also kind of a psychologically clean level, but we actually blasted past it to like 50, uh, 1.5 cents. So it's not, you know, that psychological argument, eh, it works sometimes, not always. It's kind of, it's kind of, uh, it doesn't always work, right? So if we were to play out exactly what we've seen in the past, where we've doubled our expectation of our technical targets, then obviously 10.5 cents times two puts us closer to 21 cents. Um, however, if you do it the way we've been doing it with percentage moves, then if you double this 390%, you get approximately 790%, and that puts us closer to 40 cents. You see what I'm you see what I'm getting at? So if instead of having a, a 4x move, or excuse me, instead of having a 5x move, we double that and have a 10x move from the breakout. Well, the breakout was at around four pennies or so, and so that would put us at around. 40 pennies. That's pretty, pretty wild, right? We could potentially still seven to eight X from here. And that's only based on previous, those previous two examples, those previous two bullish formations that once broken, doubled our expectation. So that's the argument here. If you measure it, if you measure it on your, lin on your linear scale, then the target is 20 cents here. If we double our expectation, right? So just to clear things up, right? Technical target, 10 cents. If we double expectations based on a linear scale, 20 cents. If we double expectations based on not differences, but ratios, so a log scale, then 40 cents. So I guess the, those are your three, your three targets where conservative, technical, traditional target, 10 cents, probably a lower risk right? Lower, lower risk, lower reward. 20 cents, a little more bullish, probably a lot more bullish, 20 cents incoming, and probably the, the hyper bull, the hyper bull thesis would be 40 cents incoming. So prepare your body. Um, obviously, none of this is financial advice. I have no clue what's going to happen. Your generic disclaimer for this video. We're just looking at data. We're seeing what's happened in the past. 40 cents. Do we have any other models to back this up, this potential 40 cent prediction? Yes. And that leads me into the fractal that I was going to show you. So I hope you understood this. Leave, leave in the comments below if this made sense. The fact that we've had previous formations, we have our, our technical targets, and then we have our overperformance. Let me know if that all made sense. If not, I'll, I'll definitely clear things up in the next video. But let's go ahead and erase this for now and talk about this fractal. So we've seen, I, I've made previous videos on this fractal over here playing out, but the spot where I placed it was over here, right? I was saying, what if it's playing out similarly to this where we have our parabolic U shape, you're pretty much your cup and handle, right? And once you break the top of your neckline, so to speak, then it's off to the races and the target for this was like 15 cents and that falls in within our 10 to 40 cent predictions right okay so far so good however i was looking at this and saying you know what this obviously didn't play out in the same way where once we had tested our all-time highs over here it was a clean breakout but during the current fractal it was another retest more of an abc correction and then on the fourth attempt is when we actually broke it and have continued on so I thought to myself, well, what, is there any other spot to place this? And when I put this here, I said to myself, oh, buddy, this, this is another, another way of looking at it, right? If you consider this to be your sort of parabolic U shape, 
and then your correction, which we, again, let it's more dampened, so a little less volatile of a correction, right? And so what if it plays out this way? Well, <laughs> if it plays out this way, then we are technically ahead of the previous fractal, which gives you a sort of different lens where we've been discussing on the channel that diminishing returns doesn't necessarily play out yet. We need more data, in my opinion, because inflation dynamics changed. Supply dynamics are different than before November 19th of 2020. And so I think it's important to allow perhaps another, another six months or so. Why six months? Because we had a year of data with hyperinflation. So I think having a year of data with just this 3.69% max inflation that we currently have, getting a whole year of data is that. So we have at least as much data of that as hyperinflationary phase, I think would be insightful to say the least. So let's see how things play out. And the reason I bring that up is because that would coincide and agree with this idea that maybe we're not seeing diminishing returns because this fractal might be ahead of schedule. And if that's the case, then we are doing pretty damn well, almost two X ahead of schedule. And so the target for this the fractal would be about 33 cents, July 4th, July 5th, 33 cents. And so now you're seeing that these targets of 10 cents, 15 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents are, are not out of the cards. And if we even go mega bull, just absolute degenerate bull, um, then you could say, okay, well, we're two X ahead of this fractal over here approximately right now. What if we maintained this two X ahead of schedule until July 4th, then we'd be looking at what, like 65 cents. So now you see how these higher targets are in the cards. Not only that, obviously we have new users coming on board. And so if they want to experience a nice 10 X hundred X then prices need to go much, much higher for them to do so. So that's, that's that we've covered that we've covered our technical targets, how we've overperformed our technical targets. And so we could be seeing, and I give you a range of targets, depending on how bullish you are ranging anywhere from 10 cents all the way to 65 cents and, and everything in between. Right now, I also wanted to update you guys on a few more things, including the website lookintohex.com has been updated, gave it kind of a fresh look. If you haven't noticed by now, I'll be honest, I got inspired by the pulsechain.com refresh. It looks so clean. And so I thought to myself, why, why is it impacting me in, in this kind of way? Why is it so aesthetic? Studied a little bit, noticed some certain things I could be doing better. And so here you go. This is the updated version. I personally love the new look. I think it looks way cleaner. Just the little things, right? Like we just have a clean header bar single strip as opposed to there was like I think looking hex in the middle and then we had like a second row down here these were colored so I just think this looks a lot cleaner yeah this was like in the middle so just one single bar with everything you need I think it looks super clean people weren't using the um, like signing into the website feature much there's really no need for that right um, but yeah, so that's what this looks like now. We also updated with the new hex versus ether charts, the four year cycle uh, that we did a video on yesterday. So definitely check out the site. It has some, a fresh look, look in hex.com. First link in the description always. And as well, I wanted to point out that here, this is just an address where feel free to, to donate Ethereum, hex, pretty much any RC20, it's an Ethereum wallet. I've had this down here for a while. But just recently I added this hyperlink. So when you click on it, it actually takes you to the actual um, address on Etherscan. And one reason I'm bringing this up is because in the past we received this cool donation of, you know, it was a little less than a month ago of about 200 of an ether, which again, I appreciate literally, literally anything this is completely optional, but I wanted to point out that what, it, what did I use this for? It's still in the wallet. However, I did recently send 0 0.003 ether to the staker app smart wallet contract creation. So this, this is just to keep within the ecosystem. This is not going to be, this is not going to be sold, right? I guess you'd call this like a diamond hand wallet. So if you want to sacrifice, no, I'm just playing, but seriously, um, 
just using for things within the ecosystem, obviously giving back to the, the stake wrap guys, incredible work. And I wanted to test out the smart wallet because I've heard only good things about it. So shout out to, to Steph and Firebun, stake wrap, amazing app. I'll probably leave a link to that in the description below as well. I think there's a referral program. Dang, I should probably, I should probably check that out and maybe the link will be a referral link. Anyways, very cool stuff. And I wanted to give a shout out to this anonymous user. Another reason I'm bringing this up, someone donated less than 24 hours ago, 10,000 hex, which, wow, that's, that's incredible. Like, seriously, I really do appreciate that guys. Like this is probably just going to be sent to that new smart wallet that I made and staked for like 10 years or 15 years. Good stuff. So again, this stays within the ecosystem. You don't have to obviously send literally anything. Just enjoy the videos for free. That's that's really what I do it for, right? I wasn't expecting this, but I decided because I was getting certain uh, messages saying people wanted to support and I've gotten even more support. Um, you know, I just wanted to kind of make that clear so that you don't get you don't get scammed, right? Because if anyone claims to be me because they're impersonators, I'm obviously not famous. I probably don't have impersonators yet, but in the future, if anyone does, then know that this is literally the only address that I publicly display that is mine. And again, just purely optional, but just wanted to share that with you guys and share my appreciation for everyone who's ever donated and that recent that recent donation of 10,000 hex. Seriously, like if hex ever hits a dollar, like we're thinking, two dollars, you literally just donated 10 racks. You're fucking awesome. Thank you so much. Wanted to get that out there. And while we're on the topic of money, I wanted to point out this because it's relevant, right? I got this this email and took a screenshot of it. This is what I got from YouTube about six days ago. And it was all fine and, and dandy until I read this over here. YouTube's right to monetize. YouTube has the right to monetize all content on the platform and ads may appear on videos from channels not in the YouTube partner program. For those of you guys who aren't aware, the YouTube partner program is the program that creators on YouTube use so that they can monetize their videos, right? And so if you hear like, oh, you can't use copyrighted music because you'll get demonetized. You can't talk, talk about sensitive subjects because you might get demonetized. That's what people are talking about. And just the fact that even if you don't apply to actually get paid for your content, so if you, this is what's happening. I was originally under the plan, under the strategy in my mind that once my channel was eligible to be monetized, I wasn't going to do it because I didn't want to, you know, put ads in your guys' faces. I like the idea that you get to click on a video and, and you just kind of immediately see the content, right? Not waste your, while well, wasting your time. I don't want to waste your time. That's not what I'm here for. And at the end of the day, YouTube pays kind of pennies. They pay crumbs if we're being real, uh, to their creators in terms of ads. I think at most, at most a channel might be getting uh, three to four dollars per thousand views and so at that rate I think with my current views that's like a max of like a hundred dollars a month which again it's not nothing but it's like it wasn't worth it to me to just kind of waste <clears throat> excuse me waste your guys's time with ads random ads on my videos but now that I'm seeing this that they they might just place ads on them anyways I'm thinking like this is where my channel is at, right? 4,000 watch hours required to, to monetize. We're at 3,600. So this channel will probably be eligible to, to be monetized in like a week, if not less, right? A week, if not sooner. And well past the sub subscriber requirement, almost at the public watch time requirement. And so here's my dilemma. And that's why I'm bringing it up to you guys right now, right here because I do want to be transparent with you. And that is, do you think I should turn on monetization once it's eligible, just so that I at least get paid for the content, which again, not the original intention, but it, it wouldn't hurt, right? hundred dollars a month. I'd probably just put that into hex if I'm being real. If we're being real, this it's probably just going to be put into hex, right? For the benefit of the community. And so, I mean, it's, it's really up to you guys. I'm going to read the comments. So if you've never commented on any of my videos, this is the time to let me know. Do you think I should turn on monetization when it's time and I'm eligible and use that money to just put it in hex. So taking YouTube's money and putting it in hex, 
or do you think I should just leave monetization off, risk the possibility of YouTube putting ads on my videos anyways without paying me, and at the end of the day, wasting a few seconds of your time before every video. It's a dilemma, I'm sure you can understand. This video is getting kind of long, so I definitely just wanted to bring all that up. Again, thank you guys for the support. Check out the new website if you haven't already. I've put a lot of my strong, a lot of my passion into this, right? Like, I enjoy this, I enjoy this. Um, I'm happy to provide this resource for the community. And so, I guess the final point, because Hexo, Hexologist, shout out to him, uh, tweeted about this, the fact that we have bounced pretty cleanly off of the orange regression curve. And remember that this data doesn't include Wix. However, if you did include Wix, then we definitely bounced off of the orange and you can see it kind of more clearly on the log chart. So currently yellow is back at around eight cents. If we hit it soon, seven and a half to eight cents. And we'll keep you updated from there. Nice clean bounce off the orange and we'll again keep you updated on the hex market as time goes on is our fractal playing out is our bull flag playing out i'm here every day so appreciate you watching i'll actually be doing a live stream with crypto coffee in about less than an hour so if you're watching this right now and it's you know may 26th 3 p.m pst or later then we're live and we're chatting about pulse chain hex probably ethereum maybe a little bit of a bitcoin although those topics are not as fun. But yeah, join the live stream, leave a thumbs up, be subscribed if you enjoy this kind of hybrid quantitative and technical analysis on Hex, Pulse Chain and more, and fundamental analysis. I always have to throw that in there now. And I appreciate you watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.